Welcome back to the huddle and wasn't it great to have a more normal round this week and it's great to finally own Rapana. he is an absolute beast. Looking at the scores this week, there was quite a large range. Looking at the highlights though, it was great to see Cameron Smith ton up. He set up two tries, made 42 tackles and received 12 points for conversions. It was great to see Sam Burgess cross the line for a try, make 34 tackles and four tackle busts. He also received 26 points from hit-ups. SJ scored a beautiful 97 points where he set up three tries. He had one offload, a forced dropout and made a decent 18 tackles. This score could have been even larger, however Isaac Luke had the kicking duties for the day. His teammate RTS also nearly tunned up as he scored a try, set one up, made five tackle busts and received 26 points for hit-ups. And Jordan Rapana now has a ridiculous 116.73 round average. He scored a try, made nine tackle busts, three line breaks, three offloads and received 26 points from hit-ups. He did seem to pick up a bit of a niggle there in his knee, so hopefully the week off he'll be able to rest up and be back at it again against the Broncos in round 16. Despite some great scores this week, there were some dead set shockers. Semi Rad Raja, Cody Walker, Cameron Munster and Jared Croker all scored quite poorly. James Graham could only manage 45 and our new trade-in Ryan James scored his lowest score for the year. He only managed 42 so short term that's disappointing but he's mainly in the team for round 15 so hopefully he can go massive next week. Looking at the non-playing reserves there, Jared Wallace and Adam Elliott scored great. It would have been nice to play them instead of the likes of James Graham and Ryan James. But that's hindsight. I should have realised that Jared Wallace pretty much was auditioning for an origin spot, but that's all good. Something to learn for next time. And Dylan Edwards, what a beauty. You've got to be stoked with him. He's already made over 100k. So will we be seeing a green arrow this week? No, we won't. Unfortunately, we've seen another red arrow. We've dropped 630 places. There were quite some high scores out there this week as 1,091 was only around 39,000. I now sit at 4,256. However, hopefully we'll be able to field around 15 to 16 players for round 15 and see a green arrow. With Malachi Wateni Zelezniak named on the wing for the Tigers this week, I now have 12 players for round 15 before making any trades. Let me know in the comments below whether you think I should make four trades to field 16 or just do about two or three to get 14 or 15 players. I'm looking at getting rid of Yates, Wallace, Moga and Milford as Wallace and Moga will miss rounds 15 and 18. Yates will miss 15 and and he's just getting those small scores of around 30. Milford's injured, he's hurt his shoulder and will be out for around six weeks. Let me know who you think I should get in. The likes of Jack DeBellin, Paul Vaughan and Nathan Brown there at the Eels is going great. He now has a low break even and should start to make money. At the moment though, he could be in the final team. Tohu Harris has been named in the centres, which has put me off him a little bit. And his teammate Curtis Scott has been named there. It looks like he's been named for Chase Blair, who has an ankle injury. So Curtis Scott is cheap. It would be great if he got around 18 spot as well and then didn't play for the rest of the year to become an auto-emergency nightmare. Masters is playing his third week there at the Tigers and should make a little bit of cash. He is coming off the bench though and he could be an AE nightmare later down the track. So let me know in the comments below what trades do you think I should make? Should I maximise my numbers this week or save a trade? So all the best with your decisions this week. Stay tuned for the round 15 preview later in the week. Let's go!